Okay. Ha. Hi, everybody. Good morning. So this session is uh, from uh, Devopedia. This is uh, uh, a contribution from our side to uh, the learning experience of our developer community. So today's session, I'm going to cover uh, uh, a topic which is, uh, uh, you know, more popular among the um, UI development community. Uh, but it is uh, critical to understand because there is a lot of psychology involved in understanding a user's experience. So I'm just going to cover uh, five things that a um, uh, UX professional need to understand in order to make sure that the user really enjoys using his website or app. My name is Anuradha. Welcome to all. So a uh, little bit about myself. I'm a uh, technical trainer for uh, corporates uh, and uh, I also um, do trainings in engineering colleges, technical institutes and stuff. So the subjects I cover are uh, uh, pretty much whatever is the requirement of the day. Um, NLP, Android, big data, machine learning, UX, management topics, uh, sometimes even how to fill your IT return. Anything that a customer really feels is the need of the hour. Uh, so I believe in uh, customizing my content based on their specific needs. So then I also do uh, content writing for companies, magazines and uh, uh, websites, basically writing blogs, website content, home pages, etc. Then I am also one of the trustees at Devopedia Foundation. So a little bit about Devopedia and the community that we, uh, we support. So Devopedia is a technical community platform that is dedicated to the entire IT developer community. It is free. It's open to all. Um, the uh, three main focus areas for Devopedia until now has been uh, uh, the uh, vast uh, uh, sea of uh, technical articles, technology articles that we have been able to upload onto our website. Presently, we have uh, slightly over 300. These articles cover a range of IT subjects. Uh, this, this is the idea is to cover as much as possible and we are in the process of scaling this. The other other the other important activity we take up is workshops for enthusiasts from colleges, from IT companies, weekend workshops, um, uh, college internships, those kind of workshops. Uh, there can be study groups, task groups. It, it takes various forms depending on the topic and depending on the need. Some of the topics we've covered are NLP machine learning oriented subjects. Then we uh, um, uh, we are in the process of organizing tech talks like the ones we have you've been hearing from the past 10 days and uh, we have some training sessions on and off on campus on ca off campus online. We have tried all the methods and we are experimenting on uh, technical talks for developer student community. So some of the users our user base is about uh, 1500 active users and we have about 2 million uh, article hits on our website. Okay, so coming to the topic of today, um, UX for a website. The moment we say UX, people will, uh, you know, uh, the old world uh, terminology always used to be UI, user interface. So what is UX? Why is it different from UI? Is the first question that probably an, uh, a novice user will probably ask. So UI is simply talking in terms of visual components. The moment you say UI, people think buttons, text box, components, color, font, a menu, page, hyperlink, how to move from one screen to the other. So they think more in terms of visual components. Whereas UX is a more uh, wholehearted concept. It is a uh, process of defining the entire user experience with your product. It may be within your UI, it may be outside your UI. The whole experience that encompasses a user's interaction with your product, that is termed by the umbrella term called UX. So UX is not just about the UI presentation that you give to the user. It is also about the overall usefulness of your product. So you design the right product for the right kind of user so that it matches his exact needs. And of course, whatever you design, you design it right so that he is happy with the usage. It should not become a burden. Using a product should not become a chore, it should not become a burden. He should enjoy the process of using your product. So uh, the UX it encompasses what the user feels before using the product, during the usage of the product, as well as the satisfaction he derives after the use of the product. So uh, the idea of today's session is basically to broaden the perspective of a UI developer and allow him to think in terms of an uh, overarching uh, UX experience. Okay, so what does UX design essentially encompass? A lot of uh, things go into it. First is, of course, UI itself, the user interface itself. It can be a, a tablet screen, it can be a mobile screen, it can be a website, it can be an installed application, it can be a gaming console, it can be anything. Whatever you give to the, uh, whichever format your um, application takes. 
Or, and if you are talking about brick and mortar products, then you know the physical uh, the product that you deliver in the hands of the user that also con is considered as an interface. How you navigate between the features that you are providing? So how you navigate from the starting point? You take the user into your product. You allow him to feel the product, get familiar with it, uh, get him to use all the features that he uh, that he needs, get him to familiarize with all the features so that repeat usage becomes much simpler. These are all aspects of navigation. Then structuring. So how you go from one use case to another? One uh, how the user starts from a very primitive need, very basic idea of the product. Then he goes into uh, exploring further complex features that the product has to offer. How you structure your product? Designing human computer interface for the user. What are all the different aspects that are the touch points of the user with respect to the UX uh, product that you are offering? Preceding all this comes the user research. So before you offer the product to Anuraga, the user, just a short interruption. I am seeing only the first slide, the title slide, five steps. Actually, I don't see any slides, so I was wondering whether I'm missing something. Is okay. it? It's, okay. it's a yeah. black screen for me. Ah. So it looks like a video sharing. There is an issue. Probably you can try again. Uh, unshare and share again. I do. And now I can see finally the fourth slide. Yeah. Should I join again? Because I don't see any slides. Uh, can we? Let's We'll share, I'll share it. Ramana, then whether he is able to see. I'll, I'll try to rejoin. I am able to see it. Okay. That's the fourth slide I'm seeing now. I was yeah, seeing, I was seeing only first slide. slide. Now I'm seeing fourth slide. Yeah. yeah. Now you're able yeah. to see. I can I can see the slides now, but uh, since I was on uh, mute, right, I could not say uh, like the, it was not there. Right? So, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now I have unmuted I, everyone. Shall I quickly go back to the uh, first two slides to get a quick idea? You can start from the second slide. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is the what I was so talking about. Able to see the second slide? Yeah, yeah. This is all clear. Yeah, no? yeah. yeah. slides are visible. Yeah. It's... Okay, okay, good. Yeah. Okay. So this was about the introduction that I gave about myself. Okay. I'll go to the next slide. Introducing Devopedia. Can you see this? Yes. Okay. So this is uh, this is what uh, I was highlighting the uh, technical platform that we are, our article base, how many hits we have, how many users we have, what sort of activities we have been into, articles, workshops, tech talks, training sessions. This has been our main activity until now. Of course, we are exploring some further avenues in uh, in the near future. Then I am coming to the topic itself. So the idea is to differentiate between UX and UI. So when you say UX, what I mean is an over -en uh, encompassing activity. OK, can you see? Yes, we can see. OK, so uh, this here, the entire product experience is uh, covered with, within the UI as well as outside the UI. So it covers uh, a bit usefulness as well as usability. Usefulness is about designing the right product for the right user to match his exact needs. And then, of course, designing the product in such a way that he enjoys the job of using the product and he really derives what uh, uh, benefit that he has come out to use. So he, he has an original intent in mind. That is why he is approaching a product. So we should be able to meet that original intent. So the idea is to cover what he feels before the product, during the product, as well as use a, the satisfaction he derives after using the product. OK. So this is what I was talking about. What are all the different components that uh, uh, UX design really compasses of? So the interface itself, the navigation between feature to feature, the structuring of the UI, different screens, different uh, as um, use cases of structuring, go from the basic needs to the uh, advanced needs. Then you have the human computer interface. How you go about designing that? What are all the physical touch points? What are, what are all the uh, uh, touch points with digital touch points? Uh, if you take a food delivery app, for example, there are some digital touch points where the user interacts with your app, but finally the, it's all about what food he gets at when he rings the bell and delivers the food at your house. That is a real touch point, physical touch point. So this is also a human computer interface. That is also an interface that is important to think about. Preceding all this activity is the user research. You figure out what kind of users are likely to be using your product. What, what profile do they fall under? 
they are they are young old they are uh, urban users rural users what is the purpose they are coming for entertainment serious work collaboration individual use all sorts of profiling we need to do first and then figure out what is the customer base that we intend to target it can be uh, it's good to target a focused group instead of saying my product is good for all then think about the usability aspects like um, uh, how quickly can a task be accomplished uh, how uh, easy it is to finish uh, without any uh, how much of self learning can accomplish a job how much of training or customer support is required accessibility is another very important aspect of us design which is being focused nowadays the emphasis is on users with special abilities whether you are visually impaired you have uh, uh, disabilities physical disabilities so even these users need to be able to use your app so if they are a target user you should be very well thinking about designing to their needs okay so now i'll probably ask you a question on um, what do you think uh, since uh, we are a short number of people we can do it orally uh, what do you uh, rate as a good ux product a product which gave you good user experience a product or an app or a website anything anything uh, that uh, you use will say is hey, i enjoyed the user experience of this product i like using this product i like going back to it again and again any examples anybody google yeah google. gmail is a good example we youtube yes very true in fact uh, the reason uh, why i asked this question is because uh, if you realize what we are saying uh, gmail and youtube at least have some features there are some uh, user design involved in it the basic google search that we have no it is a classic example of a very very minimal ui but maximum user experience so that is the reason why i have picked that exam i have also picked that example the uh, reason why this is so effective is because there is hardly any ui here the uh, screen that i have put is from my, my own mobile screen so i have just taken snapshots of my google um, uh, widget search widget which appears in different forms one is the basic vanilla search which can be which is on your home screen then is the google discover which is um, for news and events and sports and sc scores and stuff like that and then of course the same widget when it gets embedded into youtube when it gets embedded into google maps all the different uh, google apps the same widget get em uh, gets embedded into all those apps but it's just that it gets contextualized so the search becomes very specific to that context that app so the basic advantage that uh, this widget is offering you is there is absolutely no learning to do you don't have to learn any feature any user interface any button menu clicking if i don't know how many of you have seen the um, uh, original uh, search uh, windows that used to come earlier yahoo search and before that also there were some search engines they used to be uh, they used to try and uh, straight jacket the user into some categories you know they will ask him to select uh, whether you want to match the exact word or not whether you have should i search in capitalized or not is within this word or not then language search all kinds of things they would keep asking so they will ask a lot of questions before they deliver their answer google search does not ask you a single question you type something you are right you, are, you get the answer right away you type it uh, you type something wrong it will try to find out from its uh, base of the data it will try to find out what you are trying to say and it will try to read your intent even then if it gets it wrong big deal you say type again you search again so the idea is you learn by trial and error there is no learning in, involved at all so this is considered to be the gold standard of user interface experience so th the idea i want to emphasize here is a very sophisticated user interface with lots of colors lots of fonts lot of features menus buttons that does not necessarily make a good user experience a minimalist ui which delivers exactly what the user needs is a better idea than having a very rich and exhaustive ui that is the point i want to emphasize here of course there are some applications where you know it is it is imperative that you have a sophisticated ui so uh, probably i'll take another example which is on the other contrast where there is lot of input data that need to be given and there is that data has to be categorized neatly and provided i'll take an example let's say some uh, app from the fintech space you know i don't know how many of you users have used the zero the zero zero the app for trading it is a uh, app for uh, uh, equity trading on your mobile phone uh, the um, uh, the market share that that product has is astounding the product is hardly 3 or 4 years old and it has already beaten the likes 
heads of this ICICI direct and SBI and all the old players know the, all these fellows have about 6% 4% 3% market share but this fellow zero has th- uh, close to 30% market share and his market uh, is basically in a tier 2 tier 3 his students housewives all sorts of people have taken up to equity trading simply because the user interface is really simple and intuitive that does not mean that it does not have steps it has lot of steps you have to upload your kyc pan number verification other blah 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 documentation it all sorts of things are there in that bank account details everything is there but it is done in such a simple and intuitive way that it is almost self explanatory there is nothing to learn there so that is another example of a very good ux design which reaches the masses easily okay so now let's go to the uh, next point uh, there are some jargons that are generally used in this space which generally put off a uh, user very easily you know they seem to think that it's a very co- complex uh, uh, you know space uh, technology space and you know there is too much it's not it's actually a very common sense engineering subject user interface engineering is actually an engineering subject which is a lot of logic and lot of common sense a lot of intuition so some of the complex uh, jargons are simplified here uh, one of them is user onboarding what do you mean by onboarding it simply means taking your first time user through through your product and getting him familiar with your features and offerings that's all so the, when the first time user says oh okay i don't feel so intimidated by the product anymore i am comfortable with the features i am familiar that's all that's all is the process of user onboarding is there any onboarding involved in google search nothing you just go start typing that is your onboarding so it is an app which has zero onboarding no steps nothing you can straight away start using the product next is an important activity in terms of monetizing your user activation what do i mean by activation when a user is simply exploring your product then he is not a committed user but when he gets into your product and makes a serious commitment such as uh he uh, probably uh, enters his um, uh, address or he enters his credit card details or he links his bank account with it or he renews his subscription he makes a payment or you know uh, activities where he is committing himself to your app or he makes the first purchase you know these are the kind of things where you can say there is an activation of the user the user has moved from a general exploring user to a committed user this is by go this is the user whom i want to retain uh, a general user who just comes explores and quits and goes i'm not going to make any money out of that kind of user so activation is the real goal of a successful user experience customer churn is the uh, term that is typically used to measure the failure rate of your product basically it is the percentage of customers who stop using your product or service during a time certain time frame so if i was the product owner uh, of a let us say i have a ui, um, UI based um, um, startup company a web app or a mobile app startup company uh, that the, the figures that i will try to monitor are customer churn in every month or every quarter or something like that if my um, uh, tech team comes and tells me in this quarter uh, i have uh, customer churn is 40% what do you mean by that i had 100 users out of that 40% quit within the uh, first month itself so that's a horrible sign because i have spent so much of money on acquiring that customer i would have given deals discounts offers coupon code blah 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 all sorts of things i do to lure the customer and then i lose him within a month so customer churn is a very very important figure to monitor and to minimize the next is an important term that is used which is which is uh, shortened as cta call to action what you basically mean is from a passive user who is just exploring the uh, screen as a read only user he is actually performing some affirmative action on your product so that affirmative action can be clicking a button clicking a tab entering his name and um, entering text into a uh, any text box um, making selections on a combo box or uh, shifting from screen to screen clicking a link these sort of things here the user is actively participating interacting with your ui these are all called clicks to action the reason why this is mentioned and this is important is because only this is measurable the amount of time that a user spends simply gazing at the screen is not measurable whereas if he clicks a button i can measure if say there is a task that he is trying to accomplish maybe he is trying to transfer money from a to b by using a, a upi based mobile payment app if he is accomplishing some users who is familiar they may accomplish the task within 3 clicks 4 clicks somebody who is still figuring out who is lost who doesn't know what to do he may take 8 clicks 10 clicks so 
I can at least make out from the number of clicks, number of functions that he's trying to perform in the app or the product, where he's getting stuck. What is his problem? What is causing delay? So it is an easy way to analyze his involvement with the product in measurable terms. And there is another important uh, concept, uh, especially in today's agile ecosystem. The idea is to provide a product to the user as early as possible. No, we don't want to keep uh, a product in development. You may be developing a super duper product, but you may come out with it in a year's time. By then, the user's um, uh, interests and preferences will, will would have modified themselves so much that they don't even uh, identify with your product anymore because they feel it is not relevant to their needs anymore. So that is the reason why, especially in these fast developing uh, ecosystem like these apps and websites and those kind of spaces where the product preferences, user preferences, daily one new guy is launching his website, daily some competitor is coming up. So in this kind of competitive space, speed is key. So what you do, you launch a product with very basic critical features alone, without which the product is meaningless. You launch them and then you get early feedback from your customer on the launch. So that you can keep on reworking, keep on reassessing your features and their effectiveness. OK, so what is the goal of UX? What is the goal that you intend to achieve by saying I want to give a user good user experience? There, there are two kinds of goals. One is the goal with respect to the company. That is the product company needs to make money, needs to be above board. They need to be uh, they need to have a good user base. They need to grow. They need to uh, strengthen their position in the market among their competitors. That is goal from their side. Then, of course, is the goal from the user side. So the, what does the user hope to experience? So I have covered both the aspects here. The first term is, of course, from the product side, from the company side. What is the goal for our product? The goal, primary goal for a product is to increase the customer lifetime value of my user. Let us say you have onboarded 100 users. What is the business value or earnings that I can get out of these 100 users over the duration in which they retain their relationship with my product? So some user may be uh, using my product See, and it also depends on the nature of the product, right? Some products we use every day. Some products are used only once a, once a month or once a quarter. It depends on the nature of the product. So if you are doing a, a fintech product of like a payment app, you will be using it every day, maybe sometimes even four or five days in a day in a in a day. Or if you are using a examination preparation product, like for example, I'm it is a uh, exam prep product for NEET or JE. I will use it every day, but I will use it only for two months. After that, I will install, uninstall and go. That is the nature of the product. So the relationship of the user with the product is limited to that shelf life, two months, one month, whatever. So this customer lifetime value, it depends on the uh, situation or the uh, experience of the user with that particular space. But at the same time, the goal is to as long as that product is relevant to me, the goal is to make money out of him. So the reason why we say this is because a user, existing user, if he renews a subscription again and again, there is no cost of acquisition for me. That user is going on paying me again and again, but I don't have to spend any more on the user. I just have to keep his user experience alive, retain him. That's all. I have to satisfy him. I don't have to give him discounts or I don't have to attract him, lure him. I don't have to do all the marketing campaign not required. So the idea is to retain a user which is more effective than acquiring new users. Then the next target for a company is to try and get as many new users through referrals because we say that word of mouth uh, marketing, word of mouth is the best way of ge getting a new customer, right? Because a trusted source is saying, boss, I've used this product. I like it. You use it. There is no such thing that can, no marketing campaign that can replace a user's trust. So zero cost of acquisition is the next goal. Then comes the uh, goal from the user side. So the user should experience a moment within your product where he says, aha, I really liked what I did. What I set out to do, what was my original intent, I have managed to satisfy that. So that is a moment of satisfaction that you derive out of using my product. So let's take an example of a food delivery app. You go to your uh, Swiggy app, you, you fool around with it for three, four minutes. You do all sorts of things and then finally you click the button and you make the payment. Is that your aha moment? Probably not. When actually that delivery boy comes and rings the bell and gives you the pizza in your hand, that is your real aha moment. But that is not measurable from the product side. It is at least in terms of analytics. So what we measure? 
we measure then next time that user comes to the same product and orders the next time then i will assume that chalo first time he was happy that's why he has come back for the second time so like this we try to measure the moments of feelings of satisfaction that the user has with your product there can be so many such examples then of course the goal is increasing the feature adoption of my product my product generally we know no the pareto principle applies in all these places 80% of the um, users will use only 20% of the features remaining features will be either be dormant or it will not be well designed or whatever it is you will not be using so many features you take even the most popular of apps we don't use more than 20 30% of their features whether it is youtube also how many people use all the features of youtube how many people use all the features of gmail they don't so it is only natural that is human tendency the goal is to increase the adoption as much as possible you can interrupt me any time uh, no problem at all i can stop and explain anything that you require or you can quote any anecdote of your own any experience of your own perfectly welcome okay some revealing facts about uh, websites and apps usage so the idea is to compare uh, how a user is acquired and how the user is retained okay which is more effective which is more valuable cost of acquiring a new user is five times more than the cost of retaining an existing user this is a startling fact but it is absolutely true the reason being to acquire a new user you have to spend on marketing campaign you have to uh, it a uh, first time user is very reluctant ki you have to lure him you give him discounts and sometimes those discounts are unviable so you you I, as you can see a lot of our unicorns they spread the user base but they are not yet commercially viable they are still running under losses they have huge revenue but they also have mounting losses so this is how the uh, ecosystem of acquiring a new customer seems to work but is it sustainable in the long run no the only way your company will be viable in the long run is if you start retaining the customers that you acquire the reason being the cost of retaining a customer is hardly anything you just deliver what you promised you do a good job do a good uh, um, system uh, you deliver a good product and you have decent customer support that's all you need to do there is no need of any gloss any shine any show off so retaining and there is another big advantage there is no training effort involved because the user is already familiar with your product so his usage will be much faster and much more experienced and the best part of it is if he is satisfied he is likely to recommend the product to some other some other users so that is why we said retaining an existing user is a valuable thing but unfortunately you see in the industry or in the market outside there is too much of importance attached to the new user whereas the existing user is somewhat sidelined which is a very sad trend and it is a foolish trend actually there is another statistic that is worth noting mobile users uninstall 50% of their apps installed in their phones between day 1 and day 30 that means only 50% of the apps are stand a chance of continued usage with any user 50% of the apps are only use and throw purpose they see they use they don't like it and they they, they simply chuck it so 50% so this failure rate is pretty high actually so this uh, this figure tells us one more thing that uh, if you cross the 30 day mark then there is very high likelihood that you will stay on with the user for a long time if a user cannot accomplish important tasks in a product within 3 clicks then there is a high chance that the user will be quitting the product altogether so this is another statistic which says that uh, uh, users don't have uh, unlike the olden world you know in the olden world um, it will take hours together to fam get familiar with how to use a gas stove how to use a washing machine how to use a mixer grinder so these brick and mortar products people were more patient with them but these uh, uh, user products which are on the web space or in the mobile space the, the user's attention span is very low and more importantly the choice available is very high so there is too much of competition too much of choice so the product the users uh, are, are you know they are they are very selective very really choosy two clicks three clicks they don't like it they just chuck the product and they go off and they go because they have lot of options so this is a reality we live with so products have to scale up to this reality one and two users decide whether they need to continue with the mobile app within less in less than a minute so the time available for a product to make an impression on the user is just one minute within that you have to capture your user after that he is likely to quit so these are all figures that matter a lot when it comes to delivering a good user experience 
Only 20% of the users any use any mobile or uh, uh, web app, app uh, entirely. The rest are either dormant or use only one or two features actively. I may even be paying for the product. Still, I may be a dormant user. It happens all the time. Even in our Windows PC, how many features do we use all the time? We don't, right? We use only 20% 20, 20 of the features. Any product for that matter. So uh, the idea is to maximize the usage because otherwise we are wasting so much of developer effort and support and all the testing effort, uh, coding effort, all going into features which are never used. So you might as well check which features are being used well and which features are not being used well and be a little more selective about them and increase their usage, increase their adoption. A few more statistics on the facts. 85% of the problems can be solved by testing with just five users. So user experience increases, probability of getting your UX right increases as soon as you take your product to the real user. Simple fact, because as long as you are a developer, your perspective is always product oriented, feature oriented, code oriented, design oriented. Whereas an actual user is thinking about his own needs, his own purpose. So user orientation is not so easy for a developer. A developer will give you 100 reasons why a feature failed. He will give you 100 excuses. I did this, I did that, that feature didn't work. This is not compatible. Old feature, new feature, upgraded, testing, this problem, that problem, automation problem. But he will never understand that these things don't matter to the user. The user doesn't like your product. He'll simply chuck it and go. So that is the reason why in the initial slides I mentioned that. There is a concept of a minimum viable product that has become very popular now. Develop a basic product, very few features and simply deploy it onto the live market right away so that you can even if you get only 5 user, 10 user, 20 user doesn't matter. The goal is not to be expand your user base right away. The goal is to get real feedback from the real world. OK, the next uh, uh, statistic is 80, 68 percent of users leave aside due to poor design user experience. 62% of customer base um, base their future purchases based on past experience. And 44% of online shoppers will tell their friends about a bad experience online. So does it automatically mean 56% will tell them if they have a good experience? No, human tendency is we like to bitch about something which we don't like, but we don't necessarily spread the good word when we like something. Only when you have an ex overwhelming positive experience do you go around sharing it. But even if you have a slightly average negative experience, immediately you will go and complain and you will share. This is a, this is a human tendency that you need to understand. So if a user is using your product silently and he is going about renewing his subscriptions, you can automatically assume that he is a very satisfied user. Even if he doesn't spread, say a single word about your product, never mind. The very fact that he is continually using your product, that is the best testimonial you can have. OK, so now I've covered the background of my topic. Now I'm going to go into five simple UX strategies which are popular in the market today and which are basically uh, more to do with psychology and common sense than actual engineering. You know, uh, at least it is not computer science. It may be engineering. Yes, usability engineering, but not necessarily computer science. The first strategy is something called a user, user journey mapping. What do I mean by user journey mapping? What is user journey mapping? When a product designer or a developer creates a comprehensive relationship map between the product and his potential user. So what he is trying to do, the user is uh, coming out with his set of needs, his set of expectations. The developer, instead of sitting in his own chair and thinking from his own perspective, what he does, he starts to think like a proxy user. He puts himself in the user's position and starts to map the journey that the user will have through my product. So he will see what is the first point of contact that a user has with my product? How did he get the awareness of my product? How did he, uh, what is the first touch point? Did he, uh, does he have to go to Play Store and he, uh, download the product? Or does he have to go to the uh, shop and physically buy a CD or whatever? Uh, or does he get it from his friends? Is it uh, is it sent to him as an email attachment? Does it come on WhatsApp? Can be share, can it be shared via URL link? So these are all the initial touch points from which my first familiarity with the product, first awareness starts. From here it starts my journey of exploration with the product. I click, I open, I see whether I like it. I have some one or two uh, typical use cases in mind. I try experimenting them. 
I see whether it is working to the expectation or probably the, uh, it is doing it in a different way from what I expected. As long as I'm happy, I will continue exploring. Then I will probably uh, uh, after a certain level of satisfaction, I'll say, Chalo, it's good enough. Let me commit to this product and I will activate my user subscription. Maybe I'll make a payment. I'll in, uh, enter my username, password, address, whatever. Then I will uh, uh, become a repeat user. I get familiar with it. It becomes part of my everyday life. I start using it regularly and then comes the final aspect of I am so comfortable with the product that I recommend it to others. At all these various stages of the user life cycle, there are some touch points where the user interacts with my product. I have to capture these touch points and I have to see whether my idea and the developer, the developer's idea and the user's idea are matching or not. So this is the concept of a user journey map. I, I have an example in the next slide. I'll show you that. So it involves the uh, various touch points of your user's journey at the various stages of familiarity with the product. It also deals with the user's interface of the product through the different channels because uh, uh, nowadays a product you may reach a user in different ways, right? So it's, it can be a website, an app, it can be a one time buy, it can be a SaaS model, it can be a physical product, it can be a hybrid piece with physical as well as digital touch points. <laughs> it takes a lot of intuitive analysis for a designer to understand each and every user action and what is the motivation behind that action. If a user has done something, let us say he clicks three times and then he quits the products and immediately clicks uninstall. Something has happened in those three clicks which has really put off that user and it has made him decide that Chalo, hey, this product is not worth investing my time and effort on. I'm getting out of this. Something so discouraging has happened that he has decided to quit your product altogether. He doesn't even want to give it a second chance because he has uninstalled the product straight away. So these are very, very important points that you must be able to evaluate and correct. With the aid of a user journey map, it becomes easier to trace the user movement within the product so that you can figure out what, what are all the things they like to do, where are the spaces where they are faltering, what features they try to avoid, what features they try to use more, and why they exit the product and so on. These questions will get answers if you make a user journey map. So what is a user journey map? It is some complicated tool required for it. No, you just need a pen and paper. That's all. You just try and map the user's journey through his various levels of familiarity with your product. So I have taken an example of a food at delivery map because it's easy to uh, comprehend for any kind of user. So the first find of uh, first uh, point of awareness will be what is the activity he finds the app he may have found it because some friend has recommended or maybe he came across some advertisement some coupon code some offer buy one get one free or some sale mega sale or independent sale whatever be the point initial point marketing point he finds the app so it may be a, uh, if it's an app then he has found it on the play store he has downloaded it he looks through the app, he looks through the food choices available, what are the restaurants nearby, what is, what, what is the options, pricing range, different options, preferences that he has. Then comes the next stage where he is converting himself into a activated user. So what happens here? He has to, uh, this is the point where, uh, for example, I'll give you an example here. When you're trying to convert a user into a committed user, there are two ways of doing it. One. Especially with yeah, you can example of a food delivery app, you'll get a good idea. At that stage, let's say I'm really hungry. I've installed Swiggy in my phone. I want to buy a pizza right away. I want the pizza to arrive in half an hour. That is the whole goal. If I had more than half an hour, I would have gone into my kitchen and I would have made my own food. Na? No, I want food within the next half an hour. So that's why I've chosen Swiggy. So what do I do? I go to the app. The moment I go to the app, I find that it closes pizza center and I make an order. At that stage, if you start asking me all the questions about me, about my profile, about my horoscope, my name, gender, age, username, password, set this password, set, don't put character, special character, address, this, that verification, OTP, GTP, then you enter bank detail, then you enter your address. If you ask that fellow to do all these things at that stage, no, he will simply say, yo, it's not worth it and he'll get out. So what happens, most of these products, whether it is Swiggy or Amazon, all these fellows, for the first time user, they allow him to log in as a guest and they allow him to finish his function. So that that first one successful moment of satisfaction, no, it comes very quickly. So you make your purchase. Then slowly you can do all your configuration and profiling and becoming familiar with the product and all that. So the goal is to give you something that you want as soon as possible. So this kind of information you will probably get if you 
analyze the number of users who are quitting at this point and saying, oh, this is too cumbersome, too elaborate. Let me try something else. So these are all examples of places where you can uh, evaluate a touch point and see how you can speed it up. Then comes the user's uh, customer service for the user. How the whereabouts where you want to try, try trace your driver. Where is the driver presently? You see the um, uh, move, movement through a live map. And then finally, how do you actually measure? Uh, how do you actually measure his success? The actual trust point where the user's uh, uh, satisfaction can be measured that is outside the purview of the app because that is when the fellow comes and rings my bell and he hands over the actual pizza to me. That point is not within the scope of the app. So what happens? You measure it at the next touch point. That is when he orders again. So this is a simple example of a map. One is the activity that is performs. What are the goals according to the user? What he is expected to achieve? And then what are the potential touch points, physical and digital? And what experience? He comes with a. He starts with very high uh, hopes. Then in the middle phases, he's he's holding on. He's trying to reserve judgment. Finally, he's happy. He says, "Yes, I'm happy." So these are all the various touch points that a user will probably go through. The online ads, the viral emails, a digital broadcast, he's searching for the product. Then you get into the landing page. He may read a blog about you, some um, uh, direct email campaign, or he may go to a physical store, call center for support because he doesn't figure out something. Then uh, he may chat with your executive using some IVR response. Then um, uh, uh, finally, when he is uh, loyal, he will probably write a testimonial for you, will subscribe to your newsletters, all sorts of things like that. So all these are touch points. So the real touch point, as we said, is actually getting the pizza in your hand. Anuradha Zarvin, uh, just a time check, another 15 minutes. Yes, no problem at all. OK, this is strategy number two. Strategy number two is a concept called A-B testing. A-B testing is about user uh, testing for the sake of uh, evaluating the options available to the user quickly. OK, so A-B testing is a, a term which simply means you are testing options A, option B, option C. You are providing multiple options to the user and you want to quickly get which you which option is getting higher traction, higher conversion from the user. So AP testing is also known and uh, um, there is a uh, qua there is a quantitative analysis subject called decision analysis. It's a it is a extension of statistics and mathematics. And in fact, now you have even PhD courses that are available on decision analysis. So AP testing is considered to be one of the most effective ways of getting a decision out of a product, you know, uh, to decide categorically which path to take. Because when you are in the product concept phase, you don't know which path to commit in, whether I should go in this route or that route, especially with respect to the UI. Should I present everything to him on one screen? Should I present to him one by one by one? Should I get the, um, uh, should, I, uh, should it be, should I go through the app route? Should I go through a SaaS model? Should I do a one-time payment model? So all of these questions that you have, are uh, best answered by a real user. So what you do? You simply give the product to a real user as soon as possible. So what is A-B testing? Randomized experimentation process where two or more options, versions are given uh, to the different segments of users. Here the important thing is you segment your users uh, carefully, smartly. So you give uh, the user segment, the one user, say, for example, Amazon does this all the time. Uh, you and I probably are not staring at the same Amazon screen at all. Sometimes I will get some features which are on trial mode, which are shown to me, and you may be seeing a completely different set of features which are on trial mode. This is, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, I've given, taken that example at the bottom of the, the third bullet talks about that. Display the customer testimonials right under the product or at the end of the page. So this was an important A-B testing. Apparently it was done in Amazon some time back. What do you mean by customer testimonials? I say, let us try, let us say I'm trying to buy a, um, um, some um, a, a, a shaver or trimmer or some hair care product. OK, so you click on that, uh, uh, you search for that product and you get a list of options and the uh, number of users who have rated it three star, four star, five star, how many customer reviews it has. That information is displayed immediately below the product name. So what does it do? It reinforces the confidence of the user saying, Chalo, so many people have used this product. Looks like it is trustworthy. This information is also provided in detail at the bottom with probably the full review and all that. But that quick display of the testimonial, user testimonial, 
is a result of one of the ab testings that was done at amazon another example offer visitors the option to create an account after checking out the example i was giving you for swiggy also is the same that is you allow the user to continue as a guest the visitor to continue as a guest user allow him to check out allow him to create his shopping cart and finally you ask him to enter his banking details or whatever uh, only after he commits after he checks out so this way what happens your the user is committing to your product even before you expect him to enter lot of information so these are all things that companies do um, very regularly they segment their user base maybe they will uh, they will give um, you know um, english speaking users they will give it um, a different kind of user interface or sometimes this summer sale winter sale kind of thing happens in the northern hemisphere it is summer in australia it is winter so how they categorize their shelves what kind of uh, products they show on their page all kinds of segmentation happens based on gender age region geography preferences previous past credit history all sorts of information is analyzed and used for conducting ab testing so it is another very important aspect it is also called rapid product experimentation okay strategy 3 is analytics analytics is a is basically a tool which can be used anywhere as long as you need quantitative data to analyze your decision making so uh, since it is applicable for other uh, spheres of um, uh, engineering other fields of computer science it is obviously uh, effective in ux also so what do you do how do you use your analytics you use uh, uh, the the touch points which i was talking about the physical touch points you try to set metrics try to set uh, uh, benchmarks and uh, data um, for each of these touch points and see whether these metrics are matching your goals quarterly goals annual goals whatever it is not all analytics need to result in monetary gain or monetary advantage some of the analytics figures may be about user satisfaction for example how long the user has spent how much of duration he has spent on your product or um, how many positive uh, reviews he has left of your product in some um, common website or um, it can be even as simple as uh, uh, an offer a discount coupon is withdrawn an offer is withdrawn a discount is withdrawn and he still continues to use your product so these are all aspects of measuring brand loyalty how many uh, you uh, so the, i've just taken an example of some typical dashboard so the dashboard how it, how typically these analytics tools work in the ux space is that Uh, let us say i am a uh, startup who is developing a uh, mobile app it may be using swift it may be using react whatever you may be using you uh, you have these uh, uh, analytics tools which are M ml based actually they have their own ai models which come as apis so these apis can be plugged into your product and then what happens is these analytical tools they put in small small triggers inside your product where they are me your measuring touch points so uh, at every click to action maybe it's a button or a menu or a, a, a toolbar or click or wherever you do any action in those points they measure that action that quantity of action they may measure the number of the, the amount of time you spend on it the number of times you make a click the number of repeat usage you do such how many times you do it three times four times before you get it right all these things are measured using your dashboard so there is a live dashboard that you can get or there is also a post mortem dashboard every quarter you can sit and analyze your data there is some for for this ab testing kind of thing there is a live dashboard available one full day you measure your users usage see what are all the different things that your users are doing and within 3 days you withdraw that campaign you change the campaign completely change your ui and you develop a new ui and give it to the user so this is available on both sides what are the different things you have to do you quantitatively evaluate what the user wants then the measurement and analysis user activity can provide insights into how the design can be adapted quickly basically very suitable for agile product modes where the uh, product team is ready to quickly adapt themselves and make changes and uh, i'm not talking about huge changes here you know like changing an entire screen or changing an entire user flow no probably not it may be as simple as increasing the size of a, a url link when it is too small a user is not spotting it so you change the location of it make it bigger or you change a bar from a button you change it to a, a hovering uh, over, over a screen so uh, to change or uh, you are uh, you are a tool tip a small tool tip or a nudge to say okay boss 
if the a user is uh, exploring on a screen and he's not unable to commit to some action you show him a tool tip saying is this what you are looking at if this is what you are looking for try to click this button something like that it can be very small but it is nudging the user towards the right direction these steps can be taken so most result mostly the code changes core correct course correction that i do out of analytics are like this small micro changes but they have huge impact so the data and insights that it provides there is no substitute to actual design intuition so it is not it is it is silly to think that i'll have i'll there are there are startups out there who are doing this they don't have a very strong design team they don't have a strong expertise in the uh, team itself but they realize they purchase some analytics tool and they assume that you know the tool can replace human effort no it's not like that simply hiring the react uh, engineer or react uh, or a swift engineer is not enough what you really need is a design guy who actually understands the product flow then of course what are the popular user flows within my product what are the points of exit from where my dissatisfied users are typically exiting which option in ab testing is yielding better results all these are questions can be answered by using the right amount of analytics in your product at the same time if you put too much of analytics your product will become slow and people will not be interested so you have to maintain a careful balance then comes strategy 4 which is seamless ux user experience across devices across channels so uh, when i say seamless it can it not necessarily digital devices even physical interface so if let us say on the uh, ui screen you say something else but when you call the call center that fellow says something completely different that is also a very jarring kind of user experience that is also avoidable to be avoided my users interaction with the product or service can uh, can be through many channels it can be through the web it can be through tablets pcs um, uh, through some uh, gaming kiosks through email through online chat through physical interface somebody coming to my house doing a, a home onboarding it may be a customer representative i call physically it may be an iwr it can be anything but ultimately the experience that he gets should be uniform and homogeneous across all these channels when users engage with the company through a specific channel they see it as one entity so you as a, you, you should not think in a uh, developer only mindset ux failures are typically because one channel uh, is not reflect it is reflecting poorly on the experience of the whole design for the entire journey of the user do not design for a single interaction so the goal should not be hey let me get my first purchase let me get my first buy from the user let me get my first in usage that is not the goal the goal is to make sure that on a sustained basis he continues using my product then you identify journey roadblocks what are the triggers for these roadblocks what are the next steps these are all ways in which you make your user journey seamless a super attractive food delivery app is no use if the physical delivery network is not compete competing with that so it is important to make sure that you are able to cover all channels smoothly and homogeneously finally i come to a point which is not related to ux at all it is about the backbone that is the actual guy who is designing the product companies unfortunately this is the trend that we see very very highly in the startups of today uh but there are so many people there are startups that are uh, you know many of them operate in the fly by night mode they recruit react uh, developers they recruit swing developers uh, swift developers with just one year experience two years experience they get a couple of certifications and these uh, uh, people are given uh, the charge of requirement analysis competitor analysis design development all these jobs are given to a new age developer these are not the same at all a ux designer is not the same as a ui specialist at all this is a point which i want to emphasize because it is not enough to recruit just a react or a swift developer what you really need is somebody who can think beyond the ui which is just an enabler which is just a tool you need to be able to put yourself in the user's experience and you need to be able to do your uh, basic computer science principles right it is the flavor of the season today with today it is react and swift yesterday it was java and javascript day before yesterday it was something else then we used to have um, user interface itself is a gui itself is probably a 20 30 year old concept before that we had something else tomorrow react and swift will give way to some other idea so we can't keep a company cannot keep on throwing away their staff and uh, flushing out their entire labor force and getting new guys every time right 
so you better focus on the basics better focus on the uh, computer science principles underlying these technologies for example yesterday we had a session by uh, pankaj on swift and uh, i don't think uh, the, uh, most of the attendees were new to swift we didn't know we, we had we had hardly used swift but we were able with and he his session was only one hour but all of us were able to understand what he is trying to say because we had the background of you know the basic engineering concept of a model view controller framework how a ui design proceeds from the data side from the view side how it is controlled what is a client server architecture how you how how you give a request how you give a response how do you balance load among different users how you push data how you pull data notifications models these are the underlying principles of ui design if you don't get these things right then you'll be stuck the moment you try to scale you'll be stuck you will not be able to do debugging you will be then suddenly you'll you'll be scaling and you'll have lot of user base and then your product is failing faltering this is the biggest problem that we see in the ecosystem in the startup ecosystem today when they try to scale they are unable to match the uh, design, uh, basic engineering ba 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 backing that the product requires and they are struggling to uh, get in their basic design right so you invest in a good ui design team get the design keep the design as language neutral as possible of course there are some design aspects which are very very specific language specific you have no choice you have to adapt to that for example if if android says something you have to you have conform to that uh, um, uh, limitations of android you have to you have no choice so those things you cannot avoid but as far as possible keep the design language neutral and then be very quick to uh, and ready to embrace change you cannot say hey, i am a, a java person i will not learn swift i will not learn um, um, uh, the, uh, react i will not learn node js things will keep coming new things will keep coming as long as your basic engineering principles are in place learning a new language is not a big deal at all in fact it may even be a pleasure so this is an important uh, information that i wanted to share for developers this is the end of my discussion um, i have covered my five points i'll leave the floor open for questions and answers now thank you anuradha for that wonderful session uh, now uh, we'll open it for questions Hey, and Anuradha. And then start speaking. Yeah, Pankaj. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Anuradha. This is Pankaj here. Hi, Pankaj. So, yeah. Uh, it's a different Pankaj. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I am not the one you are talking about. <laughs> yeah. So uh, again, uh, my question is: You told about that uh, we can have these API-based ML thing at the various points uh, mm -hmm. as a a touch point for our website flow right correct so uh, can you can you tell us some some uh, some of them them like uh, what are those and how we can use them i mean some of the common things that uh, you have been using or you have been seeing i tell you see i have the experience of working with two or three of these guys okay and uh, these are indian companies there is one company called um, uh, mix panel there is one more company called uh, what's that fellow's name appsor a p x o r okay then um, uh, then there is one more company called web engage all these fellows are working in the same space okay uh, i'll probably put the names of these companies because startups are there's no point in recommending them because today they will be there tomorrow they will not be there so that kind of reliability issue is there no but these are all uh, products which are promising i have seen them over the years at least the first two companies they have been around for at least 3 4 years now they are doing good work so i I'll, i'll probably put the names of these companies uh, when we upload on youtube i'll add links so uh, what these guys do is they are basically marketing automation tools as well as user retention tools so they give you a dashboard they give you apis uh, um, the apis basically uh, you can uh, e link into your product link into your app um, your code so they have a, a mac os the ios version as well as android version mm -hmm. and uh, and some of these products are codeless you know They, there is no coding involved you just call the api and then the plugin happens and then uh, the the touch points are predefined they have some predefined templates so the touch points are predefined such as uh, i i gave you an example of a tool tip no so uh, you can just enter uh, they have a u uh, ux um, uh, design tool where you put your um, uh, tool tip information and you drag and drop the tool tip with some of the uh, attach it to one of your user components in your screen then what will happen 
if the user is hovering around the top uh, that uh, let us say user is hovering around the button for a while and he is not clicking it that means he is not sure whether he is he, he need to click it or not what do you do you show the tooltip so these kind of information insights you can get from these products then they have dashboards very good dashboards so they tell you uh, for one function on an average 60% of the users are able to perform a use case in four clicks eight clicks six clicks so that kind of graph information they will give where are the points where the user exits that is a very useful statistics so they will tell you it can be mapped to your user function so if you have your function let's say in your swift uh, screen you have four or five uh, components and each function will have some action required right so you can attach this um, uh, trigger uh, tools trigger to those uh, points and uh, you automatically this notification will be triggered to the time dashboard saying at this function this you this is the last action that the user performed before he quit so this kind of statistics is available on the dashboard these products are good of course they are quite primitive but they are good right right yeah we'll go through them yeah yeah i'll give you a couple of links you can go through them at leisure yeah sure thanks any other questions Uh, uh this is abhinav uh, hi abhinav hi thank you for the wonderful talk uh, actually i wanted to know like uh, uh, for this uh, uh, like ab testing and also uh, like for example if you want to collect logs for the user actions like the click patterns or uh, the logging patterns when they log in and log out and things like mm -hmm. that are there certain you know uh, like what kind of libraries are out there uh, particularly in open source domain or something that we can actually make use of uh there are not many in the open source domain actually of course if you are you if you are comfortable with using google analytics then you have to develop your own wrappers over it and you you can manage that is what um, some people do but as far as i have seen in this in this ux automation space there is not yet any good open source but there are many companies who survive with just google analytics uh, you plug in it uh, but I, and uh, or if you have your own dashboard you can create you can use the google analytics apis and you feed it into your dashboard but as of now i have not seen any open source okay just to add to that at devopedia we are using google analytics but uh, we are only using one of the basics that the google analytics provides us so we still as anuradha mentioned we still need to build uh, events and touch points on top of google analytics to uh, you know get the best out of it so that is a pending task which we are yet to deploy okay but uh, having said that uh, maybe a question to anuradha which are the tools uh, that are been specifically built for ux ux analytics are there tools like that no okay that is a problem that is a problem it is uh, the regular analytics whatever we use for other uh, aspects you know whether it is fintech or health or whatever they have more advanced analytics products available for ux analytics still no, nobody in fact if some open source comes up it they will have very high traction because there are so many websites even a college student can create a website but to measure the success rate of his website he is not able to get quantitative data so now if we if in fact if in devopedia we can, if we can focus on creating a you know a model sort of thing which can be plugged into a product it will be very good we we'll think about it sure yeah any other questions one question uh, another question i have is like uh, you mentioned the the utmost importance of having a designer uh, before actually getting involved with the you know the coding team uh, for any application that uh, you know one is planning so uh, like usually like is it okay to or is it good to start with a freelance designer or uh, like sometimes these freelance people may not fully understand the you know the long term vision and things like that so like what are the resources can for example in a startup uh, like for example i am uh, particularly interested because i am bootstrapping a startup and currently you know uh, not in a stage where we have funds or something like that 
सो इट्स नॉट दैट वी कैन अफोर्ड अ फुल टाइम वेरी एक्सपीरियंस हाईली एक्सपीरियंस डिजाइनर सो आर देयर यू नो रीजनेबल people like in a freelance community who can you know do something is it a good idea to go that route or should we you know plan for a full time designer uh, see there are two ways of doing this uh, uh, one is for example i'll give you my own example mm-hmm. i have done these kind of projects freelance design okay so how it works is because of course i have done it only for people who might know so it's not as though i actively market that i am doing um, you know ux consultancy ux design support no i i don't publicize this information because it's not a popular freelancing even in my introduction i have only said i am a, a, a content writer and um, a trainer because if i say i am a, a freelance consultant that's a that's a basket of so many skills right so how do i define what i am but this is an important area where um, experienced people are available they especially uh, people who are you know uh, who have industry experience who have come out and who are trying to develop products on their own like exam the example which you gave but they don't want to uh, put the risk of you know may putting in their money putting in their effort they are ready to co- collaborate with you and share their expertise such people are available so you will be better yeah it is such people are available for example i can help you if you want And that so, would be great i really need someone to actually help me out sure. on something and uh, i mean uh, really would like to uh, no i mean it will be great if you can help I or would, I you know somebody who can do that sure. so at least at least uh, to an extent of you know discussing ideas and giving you some direction i can help you sure. after that so somebody working with you on a sustained basis we can try and find some people if, if through our contacts and all that. yeah yeah see okay, that can be good but this area of uh, freelancing uh, makes sense uh, it is it is very nascent it is still not developed well because it is a very uh, vague kind of requirement right each uh, startup there is a little bit of domain knowledge also that is required at the design stage because if you are developing a healthcare product or a fintech product yeah usually like what i have seen with freelancers is that they uh, advertise themselves they will give you a page design or something like that but we want to get into more involvement with the user rather than just a front page design or something exactly it should be somebody who identifies with your product who, yes. who really you know somebody is inspired by your product yeah yeah true their, their relationship with you is short term it doesn't matter but as long as they are there they do a 400% job yeah yeah that kind of person there are there but it's a little it's difficult to find them Yeah. But you, the best place to start with is uh, uh, just send a feeler on LinkedIn. No, see if you are getting any like-minded people to support you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Or you can probably post a question and see what kind of responses you get for your design, and then you can probably take a conversation further or something like that. Though yeah. there are there are some freelance portals where you know you can uh, put in your requirement and ask for skills. but uh, uh, you will be uh, it's very difficult for you to define your problem statement right because you are not yes. in that state right yes that is the problem so you you best place to start is make some open ended um, uh, you know start on linkedin mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what kind of action it and of Makes course I, I'll, i'll probably i'll probably uh, catch up with you offline and we'll we'll i'll probably give you a small idea of uh, what we can do next sure sure thank you thank you nora No problem. Thank you very much. No problem. Hey, Anuradha, I'm Pankaj again. Yeah, Pankaj. So, yeah, so uh, going to Avinav question, right? So uh, I think we are also on a very similar stage. <laughs> we we have bootstrap. I I think many people would be on a very similar stage where with limited funds, people are trying to do all those limited stuff just to get some traction and then look for uh, you know bigger stuff. so uh, th- that's where even i was looking if uh, i mean uh, uh, like who can guide us we have done some some ux some ui but all with our basic and limited knowledge so uh, like <laughs> uh, yeah i can this is arvin here i can connect to you guys uh, later on after the talk yeah in yeah. fact uh, there are uh, uh, probably, uh, uh, you have to send me an email uh, yeah so that i have your handle Abhinav and Anuradha, I have their emails. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, where, 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 where would I need to send a mail? You can send it to webadmin at devopedia.org. 
okay okay yeah any other questions from others okay anything else uh, yeah this is also good anuradha's email address is there on the screen pankaj are you seeing that yeah i can see that yeah we'll try to catch up with you yeah. sure see i may not be able to do an in depth involvement but at least initial yeah. you know as a sounding yeah. board yeah and if you can give us some direction that talk absolutely that much i can surely help 